Hello friends of data streaming and stream processing. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Gunnar and in today's data streaming quick tip, I would like to answer a question which I've been asked a lot in the past. And this is how can we enable change data capture when running Postgres on Amazon RDS? So I wanna talk about configuring the database, but also setting up the permissions required for using change data capture. And then with the setup in place, you can use tools like Debezium, the Flink CDC connector for Postgres, which is based on Debezium, or fully managed platforms like Decodable for ingesting and processing those change wins. Let's do this. All right, so before setting up a database, there's two other things which I need to configure. I need to set up a database parameter group and I need to set up a VPC security group so that I then actually can connect to my database running on RDS. Let's start with the database parameters. I need to specify which kind of database I want to use this with. So I'm gonna use Postgres 15. I need to specify a name and also I can give it a description so I know what this is about. Now, for using change data capture or logical replication, as it's called with Postgres, there's exactly one option which I need to configure. And this is called an RDS, RDS logical replication. So I need to specify one as the value for this option. And this is the one thing I need to enable logical replication. There's other options which I could set. For instance, I could increase the number of maximum uh, concurrent replication slots if I wanted to use multiple connectors at the same time. But really, RDS logical replication, that's the one one single option which I need to specify in order to use change data capture. So the next thing I want to configure is a VPC security group. Everything on RDS runs within virtual private networks, which means I need to configure accessibility to those resources such as our Postgres database. So I go to my VPC settings, I create a new security group and I specify a name and a description for it. Then I configure my inbound and outbound access routes for this security group. So in this case, I'm just specifying an inbound rule and I want to allow the access to the Postgres port um, from every possible IP address out there. I also could further lock this down. So let's say I just wanted to allow for access from the decodable network, then I could put those documented IP addresses here. But for now, I'm just allowing for access from every machine. So I click create and then I have this security group in place. All right, so now it's time to actually create our database. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the Create button. I specify which kind of database I wanna create. I wanna create a Postgres database. I specify the version. I want to use Postgres 15, the latest and greatest. And for our purposes here, we don't really need much size or much bandwidth. So I'm fine with using the free tier. I need to specify a name and I also need to specify the credentials for our root users. So Postgres would be the root user and I specify a password for them. Don't really care about the storage size, so I disable the auto scaling. But what I do care about is the connectivity. So here I need to specify this VPC security group, which I set up before. So I want to allow for public access and I specify this VPC security group, which I created. Then I'm gonna expand this additional configuration box here and I want to specify the database name. So I'm gonna use inventory DB and most importantly, here is where I specify which database parameters to use. So here I need to refer to this parameter group, which I created in order to use the logic replication change data capture with this database. I don't really care about the other settings. So I just can go ahead and click the create button once more. So our database is now being created and it takes a few moments for it to come up. And after a while, I will have this nice new Postgres database. So with our database up and running, we actually can connect to it. And here I already have a database shell open using pgcli. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna verify that my settings are correct. So I'm selecting from the pg underscore settings table or view the settings val level and RDS logic replication. Their value is on and logical, which are the correct values. So this is all looking good. Then for having some data to play with, I'm going to create a new table, customers. I specify that this should have a replica identity of full, which means that if I do data updates, that I also will get the old state of the row as part of those update events. And then to have some example data, I just insert a few rows into this table. 
Now I could connect to this database using our Postgres root user, but rather I would want to use a dedicated account which has the minimal set of required privileges. So for this purpose, I'm creating a new role, CDC users, and I specify just the exact set of privileges to this role. So this needs to have the usage privilege on our inventory schema. It needs to have the RDS underscore replication role, otherwise it won't work. And I need to give select uh, pr privileges for this table so that we can do an initial snapshot of this customer's table. Next, I'm going to create a user which is or which has this role. So let me create this user CDC underscore user. And now there's one more thing which I need to do. And this is I need to specify or I need to create what's called a publication. And this publication essentially controls which tables are contained in this change event stream. So here I'm going to create a dedicated publication just for this table. And I'm doing this upfront. I alternatively could also have the connector do this, but then again, I would have to have create permissions for this user, which I don't really want. So I rather specified upfront and then this publication will be used by the connector later on. All right, so let's finally see whether everything works as expected. And for this purpose, I already set up an instance of the decodable Postgres connector, which is based on Debezium. And if we take a look at its configuration, we see this is connected to our Postgres database on RDS, and it is using this CDC user. And if you take a look at the data already emitted by the connector, we see this is the initial snapshot data from this customer's table. Now, if I go back to my Postgres shell, I can do a few data changes. So I'm updating this row with key 1004 a few times. And if I then go back to the decodable UI and I take a look at the stream, I see that all those changes have been captured just as it should be the case. So I ex can expand the row state there and I see not only the current state of this row, but also all the previous row versions. And that's it. We have set up a Postgres database on Amazon RDS, and it is configured to use logical replication, which is Postgres version of change data capture for exposing change event streams. So we can use tools like Debezium or platforms like Decodable for ingesting and processing those change events. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button for this video. And also, if there is anything in particular which you would like to learn more about in the context of data streaming and stream processing, please put a comment below with your ideas for future episodes. Until then, happy streaming!